right. Uh, welcome everybody here live at Basila and also on stream uh, to ULES AI demo. And today we have a very exciting uh, session coming up. We have a theme of alternative realities of AI and metaverse uh, together uh, with ULE Creative Content Med and Media and ULE Innovations. So just that you know what we are doing over here, um, we have these uh, monthly ULE AI demo events. And they are uh, aimed to share knowledge and insights about AI technology and also the possible applications of it uh, here at ULE, but also with our partnering uh, networks outside of ULE. And we have uh, friends from Finland and all over the world visiting us and uh, sharing knowledge and also uh, experiments. And this event is created by ULE Innovations here at ULE. And if you want to join us, that would be very lovely. We have this monthly. It's the last Tuesday of every month, not the summer months because we are on holiday then, but every other. So you can uh, scan uh, this QR code with your smartphone and sign up for the form, and then you will be added to the event events guest list. And we also have these opportunities to come here live in Basila from time to time. Um, so today we have uh, a very interesting menu served. Uh, first, uh, we're going to talk about ULE and AI innovations in general. Uh, then we have some strategy and next steps and what have we done and learned with some case examples. And a very, very uh, exciting example uh, as the third case of Independence Day celebration at Roblox. So we serve a monthly menu of, of uh, cases. But first, we're going to talk about ULE and AI innovations, what it is all about. And just that you might wonder, who am I? My name is Tuve Mulleri. I am the AI innovation lead here at ULE Innovations. I've been working in tech for over a decade, and uh, I'm the host of this uh, AI demo event, and I'm also uh, the manager of ULES experiments, portfolio of AI experiments. And my mission here is to foster AI innovations at ULE, uh, collaborating with our partners and networks both within and outside of ULE. And if you want to connect with me, uh, you can also uh, scan the QR code. It, it links to my LinkedIn. So just a few words about what the what, what ULE Innovations is about. Uh, we are a collaborative network uh, enabled and, and driven by core team. Uh, we're not a large team, there are uh, five of us. And today I'm, I'm presenting here with Satu Keta, who is also present at physically at this event. But we have Vesa Apra, who is a metaverse lead, Jouni Freelander, uh, innovation lead, uh, Satu Keta, who is here today, innovation lead, and Jari Lahti, who is the head of innovations. Feel free to contact any of us if you have anything to ask about uh, experiments. This clicker isn't woken up yet, but let's hope that it gets more flexible during the presentation. But the purpose of strategy driven innovation is that we recognize different futures and opportunities and activate ULE to proceed towards them, towards uh, through experiments and we just want to say to everybody that uncertainties are okay and it's okay to also fail. So experiments that we do, we of course hope that they will be a success, but we learn from failure, so it's okay to learn uh, and fail as well. And we activate and promote cre creativity and create room for new ideas as well. And significant value from uh, global and uh, local collaborations and networks uh, across sectoral boundaries. We work together with university, with different media companies. Uh, we work uh, with uh, private companies, consultancies. So we see value in, in creating this network of innovation uh, across Europe and world. But let's dive into AI. So we, of course, 
I think all of you by now know what AI is, and I'm not going to dive into that. That's not the topic today. But what I just want to say is that we are looking at this very big uh, possible transformation that is often compared to the transformation when uh, personal PCs came to everybody's home and the internet came to the newsroom. So we are our verge of something big, probably. So now we are very excited. There's been a big hype and everybody's putting AI into everything and everybody's so excited about it. But I think that we need to be smart and responsible when we are making innovations and, and applicating AI into systems. Uh, AI is just a technology. It isn't anything special. It isn't anything live. It isn't uh, a sentient being. It's just technology and it cannot do everything that we hope that it would do. Uh, it, it will not solve our relationships with our, our friends or partners and it won't fill the dishwasher for us and uh, let, uh, let us get easy with our chores, not yet at least, so it doesn't do everything that we want. And that's completely fine. But we need to consider uh, the sensible and also responsible applications for it and set uh, sufficiently ambitious goals for the future development of, of AI. But I am an optimist, uh, and that means that I believe that good, we, good, good things will come uh, out of this. So if you want to talk about dystopias, I'm not the right person for that. Uh, optimism, optimism means that uh, I believe that things will turn out well if we work towards those, those goals. So I'm hoping that everything will turn out for the better. still isn't working with me, the clicker, but maybe on the next slide. But we want to approach here at ULE AI in a responsible way and also in a comprehensive and systematic way. Uh, and how do we do that? We have created principles and guidelines for responsible AI and also uh, are clarifying the, in the process of clarifying the governance of AI here at ULE. Well, what does it mean and why do we do it? <laughs> Focusing on a responsible approach has so many uh, benefits. It is no, not only an instinct value, but also it frees energy and reduces many of the uncertainties related uh, using AI. And when there is support and information available, for both uh, legislative and addressing ethical issues, development decisions become easier to make on how we uh, use AI. And this is like a very hard topic. Also, creativity needs boundaries when we use AI. So we, we cannot just apply it to absolutely everything, but it, it needs guide rails and also uh, the, use, the guide rails for responsible use of AI to create psychological safety for experiments and utilizing AI as well. And responsibility angle encourages us uh, to focus more on the people instead of the technology, which is very important to us. That's uh, one of the core values of ULE that we focus on, not the technology, but, but on the people. And transparency and reliability in AI development strengthen public trust in ULE, which we want to keep over 80% of fin Finnish uh, citizens uh, trust us and we would like to keep it that way so we don't use AI into anything that might diminish the trust. So the role of creating these general principles, these principles uh, are a tool to make sure that uh, our, our use of AI is aligned with our mission values and also the strategy here at ULE. Uh, principle needs to be universally applicable but also to guide everyday work that we do here. And uh, they are the guide rails, guide rails for use of AI here at ULE uh, and help in discussing and making decisions about AI. And principles are the starting point for more detailed guidance as well as governance model here of AI here at ULE. And these are also available on our website. I did not add a QR code, but if you Google these ULES principles for responsible AI, they are available uh, at ULE website um, in English, in Swedish, and also in Finnish. So we have these seven principles, 
And the first principle is that human is always responsible. So we don't never publish anything or, or put out a product that hasn't been approved by a human. Uh, we are very particular with that. And also that we develop AI for the benefit of society, uh, considering uh, the environment as well. So uh, these are two of the things that we uh, consider on, on when we are developing AI products or anything related to AI. We reach the user experience content on our work with AI. So just to add AI for AI isn't a reason to use AI. It has to bring something more into the experience or the content. It needs to enrich it. Uh, our use for AI is open, transparent and supports independent choices. One of actually this event that we have uh, Ule AI demo is for the reasons that we want to be transparent on what we are experimenting on and who we are doing with. Of course, it doesn't show everything that we, that we do, but it's still a gesture that we are opening up on, on uh, showing everybody that what we are doing. We also uh, protect people's personal uh, privacy and data on, on when we are working with AI. We respect copyright uh, laws and uh, we continuously evaluate evaluate, develop, and update uh, while we are working. So we are working in an iterative way. The technology is going forward so fast that we, the legislation and, and also the applications are, are changing or are coming up from behind that we, we need to constantly look at where we are and how we are working uh, with this technology. But go check these out. I, these are very good, I would say. So how do we do it? This is something that we are getting asked very often. Uh, we believe that uh, we want to have these cross-functional teams that are not isolated, but, but are integrated into this bigger uh, system of, of guiding AI here at ULE. So uh, the owner of ULE's management group, uh, the director responsible for AI is Johanna Turn-Mangs. And then we have these different uh, groups that also work together towards uh, promoting these guide rails and goals that we have. We have the AI Forum, which is open for a more wider range of, of people here at ULE. So basically, if somebody from ULE is interested in AI and feels that they have something to give to the subject, they can join the AI Forum and discuss uh, on different matters. Uh, and then we have the AI management group seen in the picture. The, the cool robot sitting in the couch is called Voitto. It's one of our first robotic journalists that we have had here in Ule. Uh, he is nearly re retiring, so he's so old uh, <laughs> as the technology. But, but we wanted to, to take him into the, the picture. And uh, this AI management group basically uh, discusses and solves these uh, tricky um, ethical and, and these guide rails questions that my might rise from, from ULE. And then we are on the path of recruiting head of responsible AI. Uh, this recruitment is uh, almost finished, so we have very soon the head of responsible AI as well. But that's the, the main point that we don't have an AI lab, on an AI lab one, and we don't have a single director or a single manager who is responsible, but we have distributed the, the management of, of AI issues here at ULE. If you want to hear more about that, uh, please feel uh, free to contact me and I can put you up uh, with the right people to talk. So people often ask um, that will AI replace humans? Um, and I always say that it's very unlikely to do so. Of course, some processes and automations means that yes, it could replace some tasks or, or be more efficient than humans, but it's not a reality now and we don't even want to go to that direction. Um, and of course, if it can replace to an extent, but uh, I see a lot of these sort of pursuit of efficiency uh, with AI. How can we make things more faster? How can we replace humans? Can we automate this? Can we save money? But I think that pursuing that is it's, it's waste of human potential. 
um, completely. And the greatest opportunity of AI lies in the ability to, to spark creativity and then work also in a new way. And also to bring new people into the working life to make it more inclusive and available to others. Um, so I think that that is the, the greatest possibilities with AI. But that was sort of to set the mood for today. Um, and we actually had a change of presenters in the last minute because one of our presenters got sick. So this was a bit of an improvisation. So, but luckily we have um, amazing professionals today to talk about how you can spark creativity and new kinds of creative content with the help of AI. And next I'm going to call to the stage Juha Lahti to tell about more of those experiments. Welcome, Juha. Hello again to our guests from EBU and, and Stream. Hello. Uh, <laughs> yes, AI, AI steps. The, the topic is now strategy and next steps and what have we learned. I'm not perhaps the right person to talk about kind of the uh, deep strategy because I don't even get this to work. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the head of the ULES in-house entertainment now. So we do stuff like Eurovision, UMK, political satire. And then we have one show that I'm going to tell you a bit more. It's, um, it's um, like a video podcast for younger males. And we did some cool AI stuff with that. So that's going to be the, that's going to be the one, one topic today. Um, and if we go one step down from what Tuve said and, and told about that, the, the, the whole ULE strategy thing, because it, it, I think it's good, good to know what we are doing in, the, in, the, in our departments and everything. So, a couple of words about the strategy and vision and where are you now and what have we learned. I have three examples now and maybe some next steps, but what are we going to do next? Strategy and vision is, uh, they are quite big words at this moment because AI is so new. And, and, and uh, as, as we saw the, the picture of our AI management team, they are, they are crafting the, the strategy and vision. I actually, I asked, is the strategy ready? And what is the vision with Wiley's AI? And they said that we are now forming teams to make the strategy and to make the vision. So because humans are slow, AI is fast. We are not making the strategy with the chat GPTs or everything. But it takes time. AI is so new, so we can kind of, uh, it's very hard to predict how, how we can, how kind of uh, it evolves and what kind of tools we're going to get. So it's going to take time, and then the strategy and vision will move and kind of a change, I think. But the thing that we have done is the department goals. So I, I come from the youth and entertainment department. And this year, one of our kind of a department goals is to, uh, we have four kind of individual teams in, in that department. So our goals this year is to make AI tests with different departments. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of uh, combine our forces, not make the AI tests in our own little rooms, but we have to kind of uh, collaborate through ULE and share the experiences. And that's, that's our kind of a whole year, uh, whole year goal. And then I talked also to a couple of other departments in ULE. We have the TV directors department. And at the moment, TV directors have, the, the goal is that every TV director this year will make one project kind of a related to AI. It, it can be anything. It can be kind of a text-based thing, kind of a, assistance or they can be graphical things or something and because we in in our department we have the goal that we're going to do the cross AI AI stuff so uh, I, I've been talking to my department people so everybody in our my department will have also goals that they have to collaborate in one of those AI projects and why because I think that if we build ideas on top of small ideas they will become bigger ideas. And I will show you a couple of things that we have done because we started small and then we kind of get more hungry and we make kind of a more bigger, bigger things. Um, 
I wanted to make a joke with this <laughs> because the thing was, what have we done? Yeah, th that's a good point. But what have we prompted? It, it's a kind of an interesting concept that what do you own? What do what if you make pictures? I've been all of these pictures I've made with different AI, AI, AI software. But do I own them? I feel that I own them because I have chosen those pictures and I have done done the stuff. But I, I don't really know. They are mine, but I I, I have done them. It, it's a it's still kind of um, interesting. I really hate this clicker. <laughs> okay, one of a kind of a um, uh, more news-related thing or more ULE-related thing is that we have now from our news lab is ULE GPT, and and I think it's a very very cool thing. It's uh, going wrong way. Yeah, I need AI to do this. Yeah, animations. So um, it's a tailored platform that uh, people in, that in ULE can use. It's a it's a chat GPT, but it's m kind of a made with made with stuff that ULE ULE has done, and they are using now the the open AI chat GPT, but they are expanding the models with other other AI models. And um, it started with a small experiment, and now actually I'm I'm also using it. But now it's, they say that they have around 1,000 users and it's growing. They are, they are putting more and more uh, features in it. And here's a couple of examples that they can use that. In, in journalism, they, they can do the text things and also their uh, classical music show. You can use them to kind of uh, um, make ideas in the, in the, in the show. And, and analyst stuff also. And actually, the thing that we were also using with, with <laughs> when we were prepping this, <laughs> this show, we were, we were translating stuff a lot. So it's a very good stuff to translate. And of course, because it's our, our platform, the, the, all the kind of information is not going outside, outside of Europe. So we can kind of keep the in information and so out. And actually, the, the, the middle one is uh, it's a good thing because we, if we teach our AIs with all the YLEs platforms, you can ask stuff how to do with our platforms because the, the, the user interfaces are not good. So if the AI can help us to make our work faster, it's good. And then um, another kind of example, uh, Vicky Akepi show, it's, um, these guys used to work in the radio, morning radio, and they were very popular. And then they grew away from the morning radio. And then we developed a video podcast with them, three times per week, and about 100 episodes per year. And in minutes and the watch hours, it is the most watched Ule Arena content at the moment under 45 year olds. The, it's the, I think it's like three million hours per year that people are watching it. And uh, because we have so many episodes, I think it's a very perfect platform for all kinds of testing and also AI testing. And we started the AI tests very, very early when, when the, uh, this is a picture of the guys. It's just a, just a studio that they talk. They sit and talk and it's the most watched content. But we started the AI test very early when the, when the picture generation was a uh, very new thing. So, so I'm going to show you a clip. <laughs> Surprise! And, and and in that clip, they, they are they are talking to the director that can can we have a picture like Kim Young Un playing paddle? But at that moment, the AI picture generation it was a new thing. It, it, it like no nobody knew about them. So. What we're going to see now is it looks like a very normal thing. But back then, when picture generation was new, it was a new thing. Maybe. Saadaanko me sellainen kuin surullinen Kim Jong-un pelaamassa padelia? Saadaanko me semmoista kuvaa? <laughs> 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 no ni
Aika Ai. pieni maila tuossa yhdessä kohdassa. It was sad Kim Jong playing puddle. You don't have to understand Finnish that, to understand that those guys were very excited about the, the pictures. So we are we kind of enhancing the talk with generating pictures on the fly. Our director, who is managing the lights, the graphics, the cameras, and everything, also has the time to write the prompts and get the pictures for the guys. And it's kind of a, it was a funny thing. But this was our first test. And I've, because of that test, we got encouraged to, <laughs> I'm gonna press here, yeah. <laughs> we got encouraged to test some other things. And when Mid Journey came, uh, sorry, not Mid Journey, uh, when Eleven Labs audio came out, it was a kind of a revelation that there's a software that can mimic the voice of people, like very, very, very good. And and then then we tried to test that, and we make some very small kind of a funny things. We make audio clones that, from the guys that they were speaking German, and of course German is it's a very funny language and. And, and, and those guys, they were kind of surprised that they could speak German or English or anything. But it kind of approved us that the voice cloning is something we could use as a joke and as an entertainment piece. And then, then I came up with the idea that, because I saw a video in the internet that AI was talking to each other. Like one AI was talking to kind of a, having a, what's up bro, what's up bro conversation. And I was like, what if we just change the voices of the AI to Vicky and Köppi's voice? So what could we get? And then um, we made a proof of concept of that. And it was a slow way. We have a seven minute clip and it took about four to five hours to make. And let's see if, if, I, can, if I can play it. You don't understand the language now, but you can kind of, kind of uh, get the feeling of Real speech. Hei Köpi, ootko koskaan miettinyt, että kuinka kiehtovaa rikollisen elämä voisi olla? En tarkoita vakavia rikoksia, mutta sellaista niin pientä seikkailua ja jännitystä. Ja joo, mä oon niin joskus ajatellut sitä. Se, sellainen niin elämävaarassa fiilis voisi olla aika adrenaliinipumppu. Mutta tiedätkö, mä en tiedä, olisinko mä itse valmis riskeeraamaan. Yeah, that was a clip that they were just talking about some criminal stuff or how to, how to do stuff. It was a kind of a stupid conversation, but it proved us that we really can do voice cloning. And after that, uh, of course, we wanted more. Uh, I, I pitched the idea to the Ule Innovation people that, okay, I have this idea that these guys could talk 20 hours straight without music. So we could make a show that would last for one day nonstop. We couldn't do that with real people, but we could do that with AI, and it would be a very long, funny joke. And I got the money, so I got to develop it, and this is, was it. This is like artificial Vicky and Köppi show. And uh, how did we do it? We, we made text versions of the real show, and we fed that to ChatGPT, and then we said that Köppi is a guy like this, and Vicky is a guy like that, and then we just generated a lot of dialogue. We just to say that, ChatGPT, please make us a, a lot of dialogue. And then we had the developers to do the automation. So with automating that text to the 11 labs, voice cloning, and with the automation in six hours, we could generate 30 hours of audio speech in MP3 format. And it was like, okay, now we have this. <laughs> but the, the, the dialogue wasn't perfect. They were, because we were in a hurry, because we wanted to be the first in the world to do this. We got the, the audio files on Tuesday, and I wanted to air them on Wednesday. So we couldn't do it again, the generating. So the thing that we kind of learned in this, that the, those guys in the, the AI versions, they are agreeing with everything, everything. And then the things that they were talking about is uh, how important it is to read books, how important it is to go to school, nutrition, the food. And then they were inventing friends that they were went in camping with. So I have this friend called Mika and we went camping and we were in the wilderness and this was so good. So 
ChatGPT made those people very, very good. They were they weren't saying anything bad. So, and of of course we we could have done this live, so we could just press button and the software would go. But we needed because we are YLE and public service, we needed to get the speech as a text format, so we could check it that there's no political stuff or something. But they were too kind. And okay, I'm not going to show, but we have it in Yle Arena. It's 20 hours of talking, and it, it was a it was a success. I think it was a very interesting idea, and the team with the AIs. It was just kind of a, my idea that I could get a developer to do that automation, and the team was actually making a big big event. They they were like, "You please don't make us do this we, <laughs> because we have a real job to do now." So. We just, I just gave them the MP3s and then they just pressed play and Yle Arena just played them for 20 hours. So with AI, we don't need the big teams to do this. It's just kind of a couple of people can do it. And here we come to another, another idea, uh, idea that is also done with, by two people. This is a documentary uh, that is basically just an interview documentary but uh, it's uh, visualized by AI. The, all the memories are visualized by animation AIs. And then uh, the, the topic is quite hard. It's, it's about a guy who, is, uh, who, who likes boys and he's growing up in a very religious environment. So it is kind of a very painful growing up story. And it, it was a kind of a uh, interviewing the things that he had to go through when he, when he was growing up. And all the kind of the painful memories were visualized with AI. And the style was, style was uh, like a manga AI. And the, the software to, that they were using to do this, it, it, it generates like a kind of a blurry animations but, but it's actually a very good way to visualize memories because memories are not kind of a clear. They are not like, like photographs. They are evolving and changing. And, and I, I think it's a very good idea to do this. And as I said, there were just two people. They, they were able to do a documentary with animations in a very short time. I think, was it Mikko, like a couple of weeks that they could do the, the animation. So, it, it, it helps us to do a lot of things with smaller resources. And let's see if the clip plays. Okay, um, uh, if the clip plays right, it used to be Finnish, then I used AI translations to do it in English, but somehow AI decided to make it like a Scottish accent. I don't know why. <laughs> and I tried many times, but it's still Scottish accent. So let's see. I think I cried really hysterically at that moment. And I was scared. Everything was scary, like the earth would swallow me, but it felt like like uh, hell swallows you. But soon I finally managed to say out loud for the first time that I think I might like men. Sorry to say, but that was just a horrific moment. Yeah, it's a good documentary. It's a, it's a kind of a interesting way to go through painful memories by generating pictures that are and animations that could kind of a, make another layer, like a meta layer, on those on those memories. And what did we learn with these things? The main thing is that you don't need big crews to make uh, big things. These, these two ideas were made with just a couple of people, both. And, and uh, what I like about AI at the moment is that when you have an idea with the AI stuff and AI softwares, the distance between your first idea and the final product is never, it's, it's so short. The, the distance is very short. It's never been this short before. So you, if you have the idea, you can just find the right AI stuff and you can do it. 
And building top of the previous ideas, as I showed you the Wiki Akepi idea, so first we tested just the picture things, just generating pictures, and after that, because we thought that, okay, this is easier, this is funny, then we can also make the audio things and, and just generate a lot of things on those. And, and I was talking in one, one place and, and I was challenged that why did we do this? Why we, did we do this 20-hour stupid thing? And my answer to this is that AI and entertainment, they are, they are a perfect match. It may be not in, like if we talk about picture generation and, and that stuff, that's not good for news journalism, but in this kind of uh, entertainment context that we make jokes and we make funny things, it's a very good thing. We, we, we just make one picture and people will laugh because it's not a perfect picture. So it, it's, at this moment, AI and entertainment are match made in heaven. But of course, Sora, the new video generation stuff came out one week ago. It's too good. It's, it's not funny anymore. It's so perfect. It's pixel perfect. So let's see what we are going now. Uh, but, and what next? Uh, we have more ideas. And of course, every idea is bigger than the last one. So now I, was, I, was, I just actually picked yesterday a new, new idea. And if I say it here, it needs to be done, okay? So the, the whole idea is n next summer we will make the perfect uh, summer radio show that will host all of ULES person brands and the big names making a morning radio show together with an AI versions. So, and of course we can use those people who are not working at ULE anymore. We are gonna pay them also, but, but use them like a 20 year ago stars talking with today's stars. So that's the next thing. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Juha. Now that promise or your suggestion is now recorded, so we have yeah, to do it. To so, it yes, absolutely. All right, uh, let's move on to our, we have the finger pointer now, changing the slides. We're going to have a very uh, exciting case example by Mika Jalonen about Independence Day celebration in Roblox. So welcome, Mika. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Tampere. Uh, my name is Mika Jalonen, and actually, until yesterday, I didn't know anything about this whole meeting. So I step in as a late substitute trying to keep on the good level of Tuve and Juha's fine play and hoping that instead of messing this up, I could even mess this up. And I promise this is the only dad joke in the whole presentation. <laughs> mm. First of all, special thanks to producer Salla Pietiläinen. Her observations are an important part of this whole slide set. Mm, as for my own work history, I've been doing lots of stuff, mostly on digital platforms, for so long that, in fact, earlier this month, I got my 20th anniversary here in Ule. I feel old. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Roblox. Before proceeding to the actual show, I have to start by telling the concept of the Finnish Independence Day, because you may not know that uh, the, basically the whole important evening, the whole nation is watching a TV broadcast from the president's reception at the presidential palace. It's usually over half of the whole nation are watching and the other ones, i.e. the younger ones, are bored at home. Which is like the, the concept of the Finnish Independence Day, you, you have to see it if you haven't, because in the presidential palace it's, it's, it's a TV show with hours and hours of people, important people shaking hands with the president, and it goes on and on. And of course, it's not that interesting for, for anyone under 30 years or 
<laughs> something. So uh, we decided to bring the party to Roblox in 2022. And the signs were encouraging, and we continued on that path. Of course, with some special spice and uh, perhaps even a little understanding of the platform. And uh, this is perhaps my favorite photo from the event from last December because it captures the excitement and the mounting tension at the gates of the presidential palace <laughs> and like symbolizes everything that Roblox is about. So the gates are not open yet, but they will soon be. And as you will hear and later see, um, the event itself was a blast in many other ways too. Yeah. But why, why Roblox in the first place? Mm, as a public media company, we have to reach, we want to reach everyone. And our core value is providing experiences for everyone. And if Roblox is something, it's equal. And in a way, the equality there is, in a wider sense, it's interesting because the come-as-you-are aesthetic and, and the feeling of possibilities of creativity and, and the chance of being yourself, it, it's almost unparalleled. And of course, in Roblox, in the, in the metaverse, you can socialize and participate from the safety of your own surroundings, which is important too. Also, what Roblox really shines on is the stunning, amazing creativity. And, and it's perhaps best seen in the avatars. And you will see an example if, of it later on. Like expressing yourself and your personality without any limits, really. And of course, the momentum is, is a big asset too. Because one could argue that Roblox is the platform at the moment and has been for some years now. Um, over 70 million players daily, on a daily basis. And finally, like I hinted before, there really hasn't been that much Independence Day content for the younger audiences. And in my opinion, for an event like this, it's, it's a perfect time because most people are at home. And I think that the combination of the perhaps a little conservative, highbrow, old school Independence Day party and Roblox, there's some absurdity there in a good way. It's a hugely unusual combination. And, and the, I, I think that the results that we have gotten have something to do with that unique vibe. As for the program, of course, the presidential palace modeled after the real one is perhaps the main asset. But we also wanted to have other program there. And we had stage performances from social media superstar, now United singer Jolin. I almost every time confuse it with One Direction, but it's a different thing. And, and her world premiere of the song Bikini. And a Sumeri talent, Elo, who performed the Finnish national anthem mashing up different genres. I'm personally very proud about the art hunt game that we did with the Finnish National Gallery because it in a way preserves the cultural values that are important to us also. 
The biggest internet youth center, Netari, was also present there and also provided moderation alongside with their safe presence. And also some standard elements of the world that we had built before, because we wanted to have a place in Roblox wherein we can arrange different kinds of events. For example, there is a Morso bus, uh, flying, flying bus after one of the scariest animation characters of all time. Hmm. No. And I for uh, sorry, I forgot Samuli and Ryan Taka stories, which was like a, a little podcast there. He is also a popular character for the core audience already. And the stories that were possible to hear there were modified to fit the Independence Day event. And like Salah has written here, it's, it's kind of light to produce and consume. Well, the results are still after almost three months overwhelming because the well over 100,000 visits during the evening, it's a big number in Finland really. And at best there were 15,000 concurrent guests, which in the real Independence Day party, it's well, over, well under 2,000 guests. And, and the queues are still long, so we like, counted that this Roblox queue would have gotten all the way to Espo. The average session time was a respectable 10 minutes, and I'm really, really pleased that the Art Hunt game, it, it was demanding. It, it really required commitment because there were 10 different paintings from different eras. One, one go, but other, other were Finnish painters. And they were all over the place in the presidential palace and, and like the little world that we have there. And almost five and a half thousand people collected all the paintings. It's, it's really, it's, it's amazing. And the unique visitors, it's 35,000. Well, we had excellent marketing cooperation with many youth brands here in Yle. Salla has collected some examples from Summeri, but also Yle Galaxy and Yle Mix, our youth news department, came along with the ride. And perhaps even a little fear of missing out effect was achieved. Summeri's best performing video got almost a thousand comments. And like you see here, it's, it's really mostly the good sides from the social media. Like, w w what is this? And I'm going to participate and Tagging friends, and I will be there. And it was the same with Yle Galaxy 2, one, one of their most popular posts at the end of the year. And after the event, damn, I missed it. I played it. It was a really cool party. I was there, and it was amazing. And like, I, I have to tell you a, a little story about, I, I heard it from a colleague that somewhere in Finland at school, a teacher had asked that, what does independence mean to you? And one fourth grade pupil had answered that the, the party in Roblox. So perhaps we have done something right here. Mm, of course, the event had to be safe 
so we disabled the chat and the gaming company all hats that built the world for us made really good moderating tools um, one of the most important was uh, shadow ban which allowed us to ban people without them realizing it and it, it had a good effect on the atmosphere cooling it down and keeping it keep, keeping it calm mm, i'd say that the previous experiences were essential for last year's success because we started in 2022 and then the party was very low-fi uh, actually the one who built the whole world for us for was the son of you up there so <laughs> like that uh, and uh, we we almost didn't publish it and it was only the interior of the presidential palace and then last summer in cooperation with our development department we built the world with a concept of continuity and then we brought the presidential palace to that world well at the moment we are already planning an, another event with galaxy which is the children brand for about seven to twelve year olds and I have to say that even though this presentation is in with the AI theme, this has been handcrafted to the core. These, the, our Roblox experiments have nothing to do with AI. They, they are from people to people, through and through. And then I finally have a little video here. If it... Ah, and also a few notes from Salla again. A little hit, hints and tips for succeeding in Roblox. I think that the element of the phenomenon is really important. And truly, these experiments that we have made have been events that have lasted for only a few hours when many worlds in Roblox are always live and always on. And I have heard that BBC has their own some big world that's about to be published any day now. But of course, thinking about moderation and safety and that kinds of things, for now, we have done all of these shorter experiments. And now the video. And actually, I have to correct myself because the narrator in this video is AI. In Finland, the Independence Day reception at the Presidential Palace is the biggest TV event of the year. On average, almost two and a half million people out of five and a half million watch it. But we at Ule gave it a fresh new spin. We brought the party to Roblox. With an authentic simulation of the Presidential Palace and an open invitation to everyone, the virtual handshaking queue peaked at 15,000 concurrent guests and there were over 100,000 visits during the evening. Instead of the traditional dress code, Roblox visitors showed amazing creativity in their avatar outfits. We matched that creativity with the event. And although us Finns love to stand in a queue, there were also other activities for the participants. The most popular activity was an art hunt game created in collaboration with the Finnish National Gallery. Guests collected classic paintings from the event venue and brought them back to the presidential palace. And of course, there was music. International superstar, Jolene, performed the world premiere of her song, Bikini. 
Elo sang the Finnish national anthem with surprising twists and turns. We wanted to collectively celebrate the Finnish independence. And we did. So yeah, that's about it. Actually, I, I tell that on the Independence Day afternoon when I was on a train to make an, another game, I got a call that there was a hijack attempt and someone had made a copy of the presidential palace from the previous year. And that's why I decided that we opened this experience a few hours earlier. Because before we had thought that the children and young people are so impatient that we had almost a second to second schedule that at, if, if we start the party like even 10 minutes beforehand, they will lose their patience and go away. But that seemed not to be the case. And as we have seen in the real world, like waiting or even spending the night on the venue of some concert, it's, it may be a part of the experience even for adults. So I think that, for example, for the event that we are planning now with Galaxy, I want to have the presidential palace there, but only the gates closed so that we can, like, raise the atmosphere for the, this December's event. But uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you so much for uh, all the presenters, for Juhan Mika, for these uh, amazing insights and also on the case examples. I think that it's very important what you said, Mika, that these experiments that we do here are made by humans for humans and AI is just a tool how to get the experiments um, to the next level. And um, we took also the part of uh, Roblox as a platform here because it also has vast AI advances, so it, it's very interesting to see whether the new worlds are evolving as well. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for joining uh, ULES AI demo, uh, all you amazing EBU people and ULE people here physically in Pasila, and also uh, everybody at the stream in ULE Arena, and um, hopefully we will see you next month, um, and uh, hoping that you enjoyed uh, ULE AI demo this time. Thank you uh, so much.